sometimes it seems, you know, ruthless in his FIFA. Not necessarily going to score the most amount of goals or, you know, as other players or, or have a huge high scoring game. But he's very good at shutting games out. And we are underway here in this last 16 matchup in Berlin, Germany. Nicholas in the FC Basel kits going from left to right on your screen. Pinner in the white kit attacking right to left. If you recall last year, they had the hot heart monitors and rumor has it they didn't work. They didn't work on Nicholas. They couldn't detect one. Could not detect him. No hearts detected. Now, the guy is a very good player. Actually, very, very down-to-earth man. He's got a lot of positive things to say about all the players in the scene. And he's not necessarily a super confident character. He's very humble, you know, talking about his chances. He said to someone, I overheard him saying to some of the pros the other day that he's really bad at FIFA 19. And then I heard Maestro say, in that case, I want to be really bad at FIFA 19. So I'm sure a lot of people would love to have both Nicholas's skill sets and more importantly, perhaps, his points. Pinner on the ball now for the first real time in this game. Varane at left back for the Belgian. Ramos at right back. Eusebio on the ball now. Over to Neymar, who's on the right side of midfield for Pinner. Vieira finds Cristiano Ronaldo here. He's got Hullet running to his left. Holds it up, finds Mbappe. Mbappe just taking his time with it. Looking for the chance, a few cheeky drag backs. Left footed shot from Cristiano Ronaldo straight at Van der Sar. Bit of an early tease, and we do also see an early pause from Stefano Pino, which makes you wonder what doesn't he like? What does he already notice that he needs to adjust? Varane at right back for Nicholas, in, the, in contrast to Varane at left back for Pino. So the two Varanes are going to come head to head down that, that right left side, if you like. The reason that Spencer brings that up is because Varane's not nearly as deadly, dangerous, innovative going forward. Neymar getting into the box here. Oh, is that a nutmeg? Defender recovered. Van Dijk on the ball now. Switching it over to Varane. Pull it. Finds Mbappe. That's a switch we've seen a couple times in this game now. Varane to his Real Madrid teammate. Full back to full back in this match. Both of these players enjoy a structured build-up. So they don't start to have that additional creativity typically until they get towards the final third or around the box. So you'll see very patient, clean passing, very few errors in terms of their build-up play. Now, I'm not necessarily expecting a barnstormer of a game here with goals, 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 and lots of action, but we can really get an opportunity to witness two of the best players in the world. You know, first versus third on PS4. And Stefano Pinna, interesting fact, the only player on top 10 on either console, currently a free agent. Maybe he won't be for long. I'm sure he won't be a free agent for long. Uh, I would be willing to bet that his emails are blowing up. Ronaldo on the ball here for Nicholas. Into Vieira. Ronaldo. Neymar. For Hullet now. He finds R9 Ronaldo. Opportunity. All strong tackle from Van Dijk. R9 goes down. No penalty given. And as Spencer was saying, I'm not expecting this to be a high scoring affair. However, you will see a very high level, if not maybe the highest level of a mental battle of both players trying to make tactical adjustments and be able to outthink their opposition. So think of this being a bit of a chess match. Run to Van Dijk. Right down the left side to Mbappe, who finds Hullet. Mbappe's pass comes back to him. Over to Ramos now. Chipped pass into Neymar. Nods it on to Eusebio. Finds Ronaldo. First time pass to Mbappe. Oh, and the keeper's been caught out there. Maybe expecting it to be curling into the corner. Instead, straight down the middle into the roof of the net. And that man, Pinna, takes the lead. And Stefano had a bit of a half step there before he unloaded that shot. He just wanted to see if the goalkeeper was going to, to bait to the left, bait to the right. That's something we're actually seeing more at this tournament than we have seen in the past, where players get a through ball. They get a little bit of space and they actually wait or they take that half second before they wind up the shot. Players have always looked to see if the goalkeeper was going to move, but you see that small hesitation. Did the keeper do better though? If you have that short keep, it's actually a little bit more in the corner than it looked at the first angle, but the goalkeeper seems a bit dumbfounded by it. He kind of jumped up expecting the ball to, to, to go towards him when it hasn't gone that close to him. Nicholas may be disappointed with that one, but 
Pinna worked the chance well. Once you get a shot of Mbappe that close to the goal, there's always a chance it will find the back of the net. And you also got to think, goalkeeper movement, that means you've already made a couple mistakes, and now you have to move your goalkeeper. So it's kind of a bonus when you guess right. It's like a last-ditch attempt to save the day. Plenty of time, though, for Nicolas to save this game. Only 1-0 down in the first leg to the Belgian Stefano Pinna, 97. Ronaldo on the ball. He's got Mbappe running off of him. Uses it as a decoy run. Eusebio now back to Ronaldo. Couple of hill to hills. Back to Eusebio. Can he get a shot off on the left foot? He does. Van der Sar saves it. The hill to hill flick is still my top five skill moves that you should be learning. Uh, it, it's, it's used by any four star skiller or five star skiller on the pitch, and it allows you to force your opponent to hesitate, uh, force him to react. It gives you a few different options. Mbappe. And win a corner here for Nicholas. Going to be whipped in by Neymar. It's going to go short to Mbappe. Flicks it up, crosses it in. Big chance. Oh, and it's headed straight into the grateful gloves of Edwin van der Sar. Big chance missed there by Nicholas Mike. I was surprised actually. Stefano Pino didn't challenge. It was a wide open header. He had all the time in the world. Uh, he just kind of put it too close to the goalkeeper. Rio Ferdinand being used at centre back for Pinna. Pull it to Ronaldo. To Vieira. Pull it straight into Mbappe, the goal scorer. Can he get a second here? Trying to work the chance. Can't get past Sergio Ramos. Lovely usage there of the scoop turn to kind of re-angle your body. That's what skill moves are all about, is being deceptive and also creating new angles for shot selection, passes, maybe even another quick sidestep. Definitely a tactical matchup this game between Nicholas and Pinna. One that Pinna currently, as we approach half time in the first leg, is winning. Can Nicholas score at the perfect time though? Ball into the back post. Van der Sar comes, catches it, and gets absolutely clobbered for his troubles. Foul given against Mbappe, and that, that will be all the action we get for the first half. Mbappe is going to get a yellow card, which could end up being pivotal. Gone for the ball there, he's almost caught Van der Sar, probably by accident. And you, you see there on screen that it was a team of the year Mbappe, and we see the inclusion of both team of the year Mbappe as well as team of the season Mbappe. Uh, it just depends on your squad building. What position do you need? Basically, the 96 variation of that foot item, the team of the season, is going to be used as a striker, a cam, a center mid, a defensive mid, and that helps you for certain links, uh, whereas the team of the year variation is going to be a winger. And what would you rather have, a, right, a, a lower rated item on full chemistry or an item with that extra stat, but at seven chemistry, for example? If we're comparing Mbappe, as we are, yep. 96 versus 97, I would take the 96 on full chem versus having an off chem 97. But that's my preference. And some people will agree with that and others maybe will disagree. Yeah, it's definitely subjective. It's one of the main attributes of, of Ultimate Team in general is the ability to make your own decisions and have your own say. And remember, these players all share a lot of intel with each other. They're all the highest and best players in the world, and yet their squads still differ. We're still seeing difference of opinion, who to use at fullback, who to use at centre-back, sometimes what goalkeeper to use. We're seeing Dami not use either Ronaldo in his starting lineup. There's still a lot of points of difference in these teams. And I just woke up Dr. Nightwatch. He came into my ear and said, that is correct. You would get more stats with a, 90, a 96 on 10 cam versus a 97 on 7 cam. There you go then. And that's not just for Mbappe, obviously, that's for any player. If you've got multiple versions of them available, and there's one in a position you want more, the chemistry might outweigh the stat. So, Pinna trying to add to his lead here. Ronaldo's turned his man, could be a goal! It would have been if Varane hadn't got that all-important block, giving the Belgian a corner. Neymar will take it, whipping in, looking for the big head of Cristiano Ronaldo. But the big hands of Van der Sar punch it away. Nicholas back on the ball now. Alexandro, another left back option, more traditional fullback, of course. Still my favorite fullback to use. Sandro's been consistent for me all year. I can count on him, and I've used his standard 
gold variation. I've used some of his different upgrades and informs. And then, of course, when the flashback was released, everybody reintroduced that foot item into their starting 11 or maybe tried him off the bench. The thing about the flashback item is you can move him in game into center mid easily. So that's a, a really strong going forward. So you could use him in a number of positions if you want to. Maybe swap him with Hullet. Some people like to use Hullet at left back to stop the cross. We are seeing less crosses in this tournament, though, than we have in previous ones. With the upgrade, or just the introduction of so many new foot items, with these fullbacks having more size and just better overall stats, they can compete against some of those back post crosses. Definitely. Hullet, oh, he got the ball, but he didn't go towards it there. Invited Pinner to get back on. Possession. Van Dijk lifting it over to Sergio Ramos at right back for Stefano Pina, 97. Rio Ferdinand on the ball here. Just passing it along the defence right now, in no rush to go forward, the Belgian. And Stefano Pina is going to lose a little bit of creativity out of the back, having both the likes of Rio Ferdinand as well as Varane playing as a fullback. So Rio Ferdinand does not compare uh, in terms of some of the team of the season or team of the year foot items in terms of his passing. Chance here, he's not here on the volley, and what a decision that was. A mere mortal would have probably just struck that on the volley hoping for the best, but no, he sees the extra pass and then lift, lifts it into the left corner. Fantastic finish in the box from Pinna. 2-0 up, Mike. You want to talk about composure to make that extra pass. He's already inside the box. Just a bread and butter location, but he's saying we could do one better. It also throws Nicholas off. He doesn't know where to move the goalkeeper. He's not anticipating that layoff. Neymar, five-star weak foot, top corner, the best corner, 2-0. It's happening so fast at that point that even though there's a player on the line, Nicholas can't do anything about it. That is the definition of upper echelons. Top corner from Neymar, 2-0 to Pinna. Could we see the first major victory from Stefano Pinna over, over Nicholas here? Right now, he's trading. He's going to have to come out and score some goals. And it might seem simple, but trust me, you would not do that in that same situation. You would not make that extra pass. I actually thought the volley had a reasonable chance of success, to be honest. He just ensured it even more by doing the extra pass, which could have gone wrong. That pass could have easily gone away. And that's what competitive FIFA is all about, is being efficient and being clinical. Fiera, Eusebio, looking for Ronaldo here. Surely not 3-0. For Pinna, good tackle from Alexandro there for Nicholas. He needed it. Obviously, just the first leg. Still lots of time for Nicholas, but it's very encouraging for the, the Pinna fans out there. Vieira with a throw in for Nicholas. Sorry for Pinna in the white. Pull it back to Vieira. Pinna in control of this game, and Nicholas is a, is a player that normally would control his games. One of his games earlier had 70% possession, but not in this game. Pinna looking more than worthy of his third placement in the world. And right now, he's beating number one. And as Nicholas gets a little bit more aggressive, he has to just make sure he's not being over antsy or, or leaving too big a gaps, too big a holes. In the various clips we've seen about other pros talking about the skills of Nicholas. They all say the same thing, best defender, best defender, so good at defending, great defender. Well, he's 2-0 down, he's attacking, he's going to have to be really good in order to get back in this game. His defense definitely outweighs his offense, and he's able to utilize that defense to start a bunch of counter-attacks, just easier offensive opportunities. What can Nicholas muster up here in attack? Lacra catching four times with Ronaldo. Perhaps the fourth was one too many. I think there was a shot opportunity on the left foot after the third. He should have let let loose a little bit. Once you start those, it's almost a chain of the skill moves and quick succession, and it's hard to figure out when should I pull out, when should I go for the shot, when is it time to make the extra pass, because they're happening so quickly. Modric, not going to take the shot on the diminutive midfielder's left foot, just trying to work the perfect setup, I think. Fantastic ball retention from the Croatian there. But and and no you can see Nicholas is pinning him in. This is some of that defense we're talking about, but he now he's got space to work with. The fast counter now for Pina. Great first time passing over to Mbappe. Can he get it back in? The danger area of Varane tracking back, but giving the ball straight back to Mbappe here. He's got two Basel shirts suffocating him on the ball there. And that's that mental battle. Great example there. I know that he wanted to pull that back, Stefano Pina, down the wing, but he figured that Nicholas was going to try to take that away, and that's why he attacked the front defender in terms of using like the scoop turn, 
and just trying to open up some additional space. It's all about trying to figure out what your opponent's thinking on the defensive end. Nicholas now looking to create something with R9 Ronaldo. He's close! And I think the keeper just predicted that, blocked off the near post opportunity and caught it. Stefano needs to be very careful here to take this. He wants to, he should be trying to take this two-goal spread and start the second leg. Reset. It's all it's been all Nicholas the last 20 minutes. Nicholas knocking on the door. Can he get one back here at the end of the first leg? Great footwork again in the box. Maybe looking for a penalty here. Gotta be a goal! There it is! It's an important goal for the Argentinian. Makes it 2-1. Pina not happy. Knows he probably should have been taking a 2-0 lead into the second leg. How important could that goal be? It's huge. Astronomical. And Nicholas gave you a little bit of everything. A lot of sauce there. You saw skill moves every direction. We saw drag backs, scoop turns, fake shots, la croquetas, and then the layoff, the pass across. You can't miss from there. But I called it. I said Pina needs to try to slow this out. Get into the second leg with that two-goal spread. And he started to rush. He was going out of the back. And we also saw Nicholas adjust. He was more aggressive. He was taking more risk. His back line pushed that up. Midfield pushed that forward. Attackers, we're going to go ahead and double team. And Pina's been under a lot of pressure. And this is something that also makes Nicholas so special is that he's able to adjust on the fly. Now, Nicholas obviously felt that that goal was quite important because he'd gone to a 4 triple 2 formation, fairly attacking. He might have changed that up now he's got the goal. A couple of subs there being made as well. We've got Team of the Year Messi on the pitch now. Yellow card for Ramos, but that at this point shouldn't be too important for Pino. We've only got a minute left of injury time. Can Pina restore his two goal lead? No. Maybe he should have gone a little bit quicker with that attack, knowing that the clock was, was ticking. It's kind of a double edged sword. If he goes fast, and let's say Nicholas gets the takeaway, then he could get countered and give up two goals towards the end of the first leg. That's the worst case scenario. So it's better for him to go slow. Maybe he doesn't get that final attack, but at least he could reset. He's got that one goal advantage. He still doesn't make any tactical adjustments necessarily. He can play the same way. Okay, so decent first game. We weren't sure how many goals we'd get between these two. Pinners come out and, and put the onus on Nicholas by getting those two goals. Nicholas getting one back. Resets it up nicely for a second leg. We're going to lose one of these players, whatever happens. We're going to lose either the number one ranked or the number three ranked from the competition. The real winner here is probably all the other players watching on thinking, great, they're doing the work for me. And we're going to take a look at the highlights from that first leg now. So this is what happened. Eusebio on the ball here for Pinner. Mbappe getting that shot past the keeper. Again, Nicholas may be a little bit disappointed the keeper doesn't do better there. Kind of a little bit late to react to that one. That was the 1-0 lead for Pinna. And now Eusebio puts this in. He didn't hit the volley, which I think was surprising. Maybe because it was Patrick Vieira. He thought, you know what, well, I'm not sure about his shooting. Instead, played the extra pass to Neymar, dispatched it coolly and calmly. That was 2-0 to Pinna. And then this goal was very important, wasn't it, Mike? I'm telling you, it was a, a game changer in terms of confidence. But like I said, he gave you a little bit of everything here. Just kept working, working, working. Gets the layoff, and you're not going to miss from inside the box. Come on, not an issue. Massive goal for Nicholas. Lots of pressure in this second game. And talking about pressure, we heard obviously from Stefano Pino with his own quote about pressure. He said, listen, there's always pressure, but I like pressure. And that's the big difference, isn't it? Because... All these players have got a number of different pressures on them, whether it's their own internal pressures, whether it's pressures put on them by a team that's supporting them in some way, fans, friends, family, whatever. But you've got to be able to relish it. You've got to be able to enjoy it. And I feel like Pinner's really enjoying this moment. He's not looking at the stats thinking, oh, God, I've never beaten Nicholas before. What am I going to do? He goes, give me another chance at him, and I'm going to try and take it. And I'm not going to compare Stefano Pina to Cristiano Ronaldo, but I do think Cristiano Ronaldo is a, a footballer that's similar to that, where he's going to really... I appreciate the pressure, so to speak. He's ready for those big moments. He wants to be the star, so he's like, cool, I'll sign up for that role. Definitely. Well, we've got a massive game coming up. Don't forget, it's not just great FIFA. You can enjoy it whilst watching these matches. You've also got the chance to pick up some unbelievable rewards through Twitch drops. Okay, you've got to make sure you've linked your Twitch and EA accounts. And uh, obviously, on the screen right now, you can see there's a chance you could pick up Lota Matthias Prime icon moments look at that player 94 rated not just him we've got rare player packs and much much more so make sure guys if you haven't already you've linked those accounts you can see some of the players there watching i'm sure they're linking their accounts if they haven't already trying to get 
Matthias. Also, a little extra, anyone who tunes in with a linked PlayStation account to the FIFA 19 Global Series PS4 playoffs here in Berlin, if you're watching on Twitch, you'll receive a FIFA Global Series PS4 playoffs home kit. Lovely. Simply lovely. I like the blue on blue. I would rock it. You'd rock it? I'd rock it. Gets the Mike LaBelle seal of approval? Yes. Excellent. If you want to supply me with a jersey IRL and in game, that'd be Well, you've got to link your PlayStation account, pal. I'm linked. I got the laptop set up over there. We're okay. ready to go. Good. Good Not missing out on any rewards. So, these are our two players. Number one in the world on the left of your screen, Nicholas 99 FC of FC Basel, going up against Stefano Pinna 97. Currently unsigned. Formerly of PSV. Will he be joining a new team? I'm sure anyone watching this game right now will be thinking, hello, this guy's doing bits, as they say. I think the question comes down to, do you want representation if you're a club or an esports organization at the FIFA World Cup? Stefano Pina's locked that in. Ben locked that in. The thing about Pina as well, though, is he's got to be thinking, I might be playing my best FIFA here as an unsigned player. Maybe, this, maybe it's helping him in some way, you know? He's never beaten Nicholas in an event before that, that we have any on record, and he might be about to do that. I don't want to. I don't want to count my chickens. You know, Nicholas can definitely come back in his second leg. He's more than capable of it. There's a lot of hard work ahead of Pinner still, but he he deserved that win in the first leg. There's no doubt about that. You could also say on the tactical end, Stefano Pina only made one change, and he brought in Messi, so we didn't see that many substitutes, and it looked towards the end that he didn't have that dynamic play whether it was in the midfield or even going forward. We didn't see a lot of chances from Stefano Pina, especially the last 20 or 25 minutes. It felt as if he was getting pinned in by Nicholas's pressure. He could not evade it. I think that's natural when you get to that point in the game. And I think that we didn't see a ton of chances from Nicholas either until that last five, 10 minutes. Nicholas did look like, like he was going to win a penalty at some point. I'll be interested to see if he can continue that fine footwork in the box and really put Pina's uh, defend defenders under pressure and try and tempt them maybe to leave in a stray leg out and giving away a penalty here. So second leg's underway. Pinner in the AC Milan strip, I believe it is. The black and red against Nicholas's white. 2-1 to Pinner right now. And he's only about 86 minutes away from a monumental victory here in Berlin. And I'm not expecting Stefano Pinner to make any adjustments. He's probably pleased with himself after the first leg. Big win. Maybe he feels maybe a little unlucky not to have been able to go ahead with two goals. And then on the other end though, Nicholas might get a little more aggressive because that worked. He looked the more likely. We were talking about it before he got that goal, something's gonna happen. Pinner's piling on the pressure here though, getting a couple of opportunities in Nicholas's box there. But Nicholas survives the pressure for now and he gets the ball to Hullet in the middle of the park and finds Ronaldo. Good tackling again from Stefano Pinner. Finding Neymar here, man that scored that perfectly placed left-footed shot in the first leg. Neymar again, finds Hullet, Hullet on the ball, Vieira, Neymar, Ronaldo, Ramos comes through with a thunderous tackle against his ex-Real Madrid teammate, and now Nicolas going up the other end, what can he make happen here? Ronaldo, lovely pass over to the left for Neymar to do a little fake shot onto, still got the ball here Nicolas, it's very hard to get the ball off once he gets it in the box. And you've got to think, all those players that we saw watching, we saw them sitting down when we were talking about the Twitch drop, they've got to be rooting for Stefano Pino because nobody has a winning record against Nicholas. Indeed, indeed. And nobody probably wants to play Pino either, but he's maybe the better of the two evils, you'd say, if you're looking on and thinking about your next matchup. Ronaldo on the ball here for Pino. Can he deliver? Doesn't seem to want to put the, the cross in. We're seeing a little bit of a diversion away from the crossing meta, so to speak. Pull it on the ball, into Mbappe, finding space. Yeah, white shirts all around him, still holding on to it. Eventually the keeper gets it. Only a half step away there on the second lock of cutter from getting that layoff. He gets that layoff, we know it's going to hit the back of the net. So he's still showing a lot of promise in terms of going forward. It's way too early to start setting up shop for Stefano Pina. So I'm expecting him to, like I said, stick with the same type of gameplay, same type of game plan that he had in the first leg. Nicholas here gaining momentum, finds a player in the box, Varan gets a foot on it. Pull it now to Vieira, to Mbappe, Ronaldo. Pina's got an answer to any of Nicholas's questions right now. He's been defensively solid. Much better passing, 
passing in uh, contrast to just 82 for Nicholas. Eusebio on the ball for Pinner. Can he get a third here? He looks for Mbappe. The pass was a little bit too far ahead of the Frenchman Mbappe. He made a mistake there going with a through ball. If he would have used your standard pass, that would have connected with Mbappe. He would have had space to work with. Nicholas made a bit of a mistake with his double team there in the corner and left a lot of room for an uh, oncoming runner. Great through ball here for Neymar. Gets the ball in the box. This is where Nicholas is dangerous. There's the cutback. There's the goal. It's all level. Pinner's 2-0 lead has been nullified. 2-0. Two pass across, two goals, very vintage Nicholas attacking the wings, creating that angle, laying it off, and you just can't miss from them. And those are the types of chances every professional player wants to make sure things. No look finish there from Cristiano Ronaldo, I think, but the best part of that goal was the through ball that Neymar got on the end of. Once he got him in that scenario, it was just Nicholas's time. So 2-2 two -two here, perfectly poised for a massive conclusion to this game between two Goliaths of the PS4 scene. Nicholas from Argentina, Pinna from Belgium. One of them's going home. One of them will stay alive. Both of them will be playing at the FEWC final in London. Mbappe for Pinna. Trying to take advantage of this kickoff opportunity. Vieira, ball in. Oh, you know what? Keeper's done well. It's onside and he's just smothered the ball, got something on it to allow for the corner. A lot more saves by. Nicholas's van der Sar, Van Pinner's van der Sar right now, implying that Nicholas not creating the same amount of opportunities as Pinner, but Nicholas is the only one that's taken an opportunity in this leg. And that was a good example of one of the liabilities of having Rio Ferdinand, where his passing statistics just don't match up. They really don't compete versus midfielders or other defenders in terms of all the upgrades and new foot items we've seen introduced to this year's installment. And it creates an unforced error. Pull it on the ball here for Nicholas. He seems to have more momentum than Pinna right now since he got back in this game. Ronaldo, Alexandra into Hullet. A couple of one twos between the two centre midfielders. Piero, though, bad decision to try and go back to Hullet when the pass was blocked. And now Pinna can go up the other end, but Nicholas gets it straight back. Ronaldo here, does he shoot? Turns back inside, he's got Hullet with him. Extra pass was key, keeper was nowhere, and this is why people back Nicholas. This is why he's number one. And you just see the swarm. You see that Stef Stefano can't get out of his, his, his back area. He can't get an outlet. He can't find the space to get in behind, and it becomes an onslaught of pressure. And I talked about it before, but it makes it where Nicholas doesn't need to have the best offense because his defense is everywhere, and it starts an easy counterattack. <laughs> It makes for easy offense. He has to pick out the right pass, and then something he does do wonderfully is his finishing. See, over the playoffs, we've seen certain games, some of them be double figures, you know, 11 nines and 7 eights, and you just don't see that in Nicholas games. He keeps the score, at least in the end, at uh, the conceding end, he keeps that number down nice and low. Pinner trying to make it three, though, goals scored against Nicholas here, and tying the game up once again. Eusebio blocked again by Nicholas. It sounds cliche. But defense wins championships. Defense also grants consistency, because even if you're not playing that well on offense, if you keep it low enough, you can still be in that game. You give yourself an opportunity to win. I mean, we, we agreed that Nicholas deserved the win in the first leg, but because, uh, sorry, uh, Pinner, because Nicholas kept it low, he meant he only lost 2-1, which is really not that bad a position to be going into second leg. And it made it where he doesn't have to make adjustments. He can choose to, but he's not forced to swap formations. He's not forced to, to start bringing up uh, the pressure or the depth. He can, but he doesn't have to do these things. He still has a lot of time to work with. Half time now in the second leg. Pinner's one goal lead has been reversed. He is now one goal behind the number one ranked player in the world, Nicholas 99 FC of FC Basel. Right now, you've got to say the game is in Nicholas's hands. He's playing the better attacking FIFA. I still look at that being a pretty even first half, just that Nicholas made better opportunities. The quality of the chance created, Nicholas is going to win in that department. Yeah, both Nicholas's shots, we felt they were going to go in before we hit them. It's just mm -hmm. the opportunity was too good. Whereas Pinner, a lot of them were like, oh, what's going to happen here? Is the keeper going to save it? He's going to need something special. He's going to need another touch. He's going to have to give us a little bit of that razzle-dazzle, some sort of 
you know, give and go, a little movement in the box. Which you're going to have to unlock that space. And he did that so well for his second goal in the first leg. You know, that cross that came in, not trying the volley, playing the extra pass, that did unlock Nicholas's defence. That's the sort of thing he needs to find again now in the second half. All three of Nicholas's goals, we would score. Thank you. Many people would score if you created that opportunity. That's the point I'm making is that they were sure things. They're automatic finishes. Whether you're under a lot of pressure or if you're like the Iceman and you don't feel any pressure at all, you're going to be able to convert those. Team of the year, Messi on again now for Pina in an attempt to get back in this game. What can the Argentinian hero, Messi, do against the Argentinian world number one, Nicolas? Ronaldo looking for Hullet. Bad pass. Nicolas now could capitalise on this opportunity. Finds Neymar on the left. Hullet. Neymar just goes back to Alexandra. Look at that through ball attempt, perhaps to set up the first goal. Neymar is a constant source of creativity for Nicholas. Always tries to find him on that left flank. Now Sandro finds Hullet. He finds Mbappe. Pass just cut out, but Mbappe gets it back here. Good pass into the box. Could be a goal, and it is. And that's a third for Nicholas. And this is vintage Nicholas. 3 0 up in the second leg. 4 2 up on aggregate. Pina is in trouble. And three out of his four goals have came from mistakes from Stefano Pina on outlet passes from the defenders. He hasn't been able to evade that pressure, and it provides Nicholas with a very easy finish. And every time, Nicholas's goals just look like sure things because of the work that's gone in before. The pressure, the passing, the composure, the prediction of the keeper movement is something we're not talking up about. Maybe Pina could have made some better decisions in his keeper movement, but Nicholas is always ready to read it. And Pinner hasn't really utilised any of these opportunities from kickoff here. Neymar on the ball. And you might ask yourself at home, well, what makes Nicholas' defence so good? Why is it different than other competitors? What is it, Mike? Well, it's a combination of his micromanaging, so the way that he moves multiple players at the same time. Okay, how does he do that? Uh, he's able to do that with the teammate contain and also player switching. He's very good with the right analog stick, maybe the best. And it, it also combines with his anticipation and also his commitment to a game plan and a commitment to making those tackles. You still have to manually make the steps. You manually go for those interceptions, manually go for those tackles once you're in a position where you can reach out a leg or get you a slide tackle, make something happen, shake it up. Shake it up, baby. Nicholas on the ball here. One more goal could finish off the Belgian and be another defeat in a long line of defeats. Pinner has suffered at the hands of Nicholas. Ronaldo here, will he deliver? He had a pass on, he's taking it eventually, finding Luka Modric here. Still Modric on the ball. Nicholas, oh, it's just, it's, it's hard to watch. He just keeps possession so well. And it'd be so frustrating if you're in Pinner's shoes at this point. You just want to get the ball back and you can't. He's got it here. Neymar, a goal now for Pinner would set us up for a brilliant finale to this game, but Van Dijk, Sticking out a long left foot. And if possible, you're going to see Nicholas start to recycle as much as he can. He gladly walked on the clock. Giving the ball away here, though. Pina could take advantage. He's hit that well, but Van der Sar was equal to it, pushing it away for a corner. That needed to go in. And Pina shot to the near post because he was anticipating goalkeeper movement from Nicholas. It didn't happen, and Nicholas gets the save. And now we're going to have substitutions, we're going to have tactical adjustments, all of the above. But that was a crucial moment, and we saw a very uncharacteristic mistake from Nicholas passing out of the back. Yeah, not the sort of mistake he can afford to make too many times in the dying embers of this game. 23 minutes left here in the second leg of this last 16 match between the number one ranked in the world, Nicholas, and the number three ranked, Stefano Pinna, 97. One of them will be leaving the tournament. Both of them already qualified for the FEWC Grand Final. But after going 2-0 up in the first leg, you felt like this was Pinner's moment to get that elusive victory. But maybe not as Nicholas has restored a 4-2 advantage. Since going 2-0 down, he scored four goals without return. And we've just seen adjustments from Stefano Pina. He's going to be pressure on heavy touch. He's moved up the depth and he now has fast build-up, which means his players are going to get forward quicker. Pina trying to find a gap with Neymar. Can't keep hold of the ball in a dangerous area. Got it with Hullet now. Got to be a goal. Messi, can he turn on the left foot? Oh, it's denied by the woodwork and the keeper was beaten. 
despite going the right way, he wasn't going to stop it. Only the frame of the goal could deny the Belgian. Messi trying to score against an Argentina, Argentinian player. It was like it wasn't meant to be, Mike. Nicholas might have communicated that one with him. Very unlucky there for Stefano. And you've got to say, he's running out of attacks now. Maybe three to four attacks left. Maybe. And that's not including any attacks from Nicholas if he'll take them. But since going 4-2 down, Pinners had two pretty decent goal-scoring opportunities, neither of which have found the back of the net. One more from Nicholas, I think, would be all she wrote. Mbappe on the left side for Nicholas, usually where we see him with Neymar. Pele off the bench. Nicholas happy to go back and keep the ball. Disguised pass back into Pele, though. Pele under no pressure to use this, but one more goal would finish it for Nicholas. Does he take the chance? He does. He's going to get another goal. Keeper with a massive left arm. What a save. Could be massive for Pinner in this game, but Nicholas still on the attack. Hullet. Modric. Into Neymar now. Patient stuff from Nicholas. He's under no pressure. Nicholas is under pressure. He said he likes the pressure. He needs to score two goals quickly. And Nicholas does not look like he's going to give up the ball. Luka Modric's footwork too much. But the other Modric gets the ball off him. Now, Pinner needs a goal if he can make this an interesting finish here. And it's got to be said, if the scoreline stays like this, Stefano's going to review this gameplay and feel like he mismanaged his lead, that he mismanaged or made some un, uh, some poor mistakes in terms of the build-up, uh, and it's going to cost him the game. With the exception of the couple opportunities, you've got to say, Nicholas's defense has been unbelievable. On the edge of the box, he's just given a really, really good player in Pinner no real opportunities. Now, Pinner has to do something here. He's two goals adrift. Scoring one now gives him a, a slither of a chance. Mbappe to Modric on the edge of the box, to Neymar. He's back to goal. Neymar, La Coqueta. Van der Sar saves it, and that probably will mean there's not enough time. He needs to get this ball whipped in. That's too near the keeper, surely. Disappointing cross from Pinner. And now Nicholas is professional enough to see this game out. Gets the job done. From 2-0 down, Nicholas reigns supreme once again and will book himself a spot in the last eight going through to tomorrow's action here in Berlin, Germany. Pinner will exit the competition and it's always frustrating when you exit at the hands of someone like Nicholas because you wonder, if I hadn't got him in the draw, could I have got to the final? Where else could I have gone? You know, you're playing against the number one ranked player. But that is a match that he'll have to look forward to. It's a match that could happen again at the FEWC Grand Final. And in this occasion, as in every occasion they've met in the FUT Champions Series, Nicholas wins.